Hi everybody, here I am again. This is Cecilia Castelli and we're doing Uncensored Pillow Talk again. So I'm with you right now and we want to talk about all the things that we're curious about. So if you have any questions, you can look at us up in Facebook, Uncensored Pillow Talk, and use up now. And you can ask us whatever you want, whatever you're curious about. You don't even have to put your name. Just, you know, write a comment there. We will not mention you if you want to be discreet. But we have an amazing guest today with us. And her name is Laura Purpura. Should I say it like this? Yes. How do you fine. say the English version? Laura Purpura. Laura Purpura. Yeah. Okay. So she's here. I like she your did... way too. It's good. You like my yes. way? Okay. Let's let's. It's more impactful. So um, Laura has a master's in psychology, and she did something called integrative sex, right? Integrating sex and spirituality. Oh, there we go. See, I knew that you were going to say it better. <laughs> okay. So she's here, and we're going to talk about marriage. Is that a boring topic? <laughs> it's a huge topic and it's not boring. It doesn't have to be boring. Well, you know, every time I say the word marriage, it triggers like a bomb in people's head. Overall, in straight couples, mm -hmm. more than the homosexual, you know, relationships. Why do you think this is? Do you think that we still live in a patriarchy? What is it with this? We absolutely still live in a patriarchal society. And, you know, when the word marriage comes up, I mean, people have a very, you know, uh, range of reactions. I mean, some people, that's all they want. You know, they have this idealized vision of what they want their marriage to be, a man and a woman together forever in the house with the white picket fence and the two kids, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, and then there's also, you know, other ways of having a, a marital union or a partnership that are just, you know, just as amazing. I know that the, the marriage, the marriage thing, it puts a lot of people in a defensive mode, I want to say. But I think that this is happening because people are not honest enough. Like I feel that the gay community, and probably this is one of my judgments, just, you know, I could be wrong. This mm -hmm. is a statement. But I see that homosexual community, they're much more honest about what they want to do and who they want to be with. Whether than the straight community, I feel that the marriages, after a while, if they're bored, they can't say, look, I'm going to cheat on you with another person. It has to be an open relationship or this and that, and it has to has, mm -hmm. have names. I mean, I just want to know, and I think that a lot of people want to know this, um, does patriarchy society means that it can't be honest? People can't be open and honest about what they are going to do or what they want meaning like let's say that you've been married for 15 years with your husband and your yeah. husband is attracted to his secretary why can it be honest enough to say look i am tired i want to experience something else mm -hmm. why can't we have all of this or not and be honest about it and you know whereas the gay community is more about hey look at that guy he's hot do you think he's cute and they're more like intimate about how they feel about the world and you know the other partner right you know I think every relationship is so unique and I think everyone has their own intention that they bring to each relationship in talking about marriages you know people have been married for years and years and years where maybe the sexuality has died down the question becomes okay do do they want to work on this together do they want to rekindle that eroticism in their relationship and there are ways to do that. And we were, you know, there's a, a fantastic um, author, Esther Pearls, who wrote a book called Mating in Captivity, who talks about the things that you can do to rekindle that eroticism. You know, there's, um, you can uh, bring play back. You can sexting, you know, food play and um, creating tension in the relationship. Why do people get tired after a while? You know, I think... Is there a psychological response to this? Why do people, after 10 years of being married, are not attractive in a sexual way to each other as they were in the first five years. Yeah. You what know, can you say? Because I know that a lot of people, this is like, this is a topic that has been going on forever. I mean, it's a huge topic and it's a, what brings a lot of people into therapy. Um, you know, being two individuals in a relationship is incredibly important. When you have spent so much time together, there's not a lot of mystery left. So I think the effort becomes creating that independence and mystery. But I also want to talk about the other relationships that we mentioned because marriage between a man and a woman is not the only way. Wait, hold it there. We're going to go to a small little break and we shall return. Please stay tuned. Book your wedding day with us. Salon DNA, 415-956-1909. Welcome back to 
more show, you guys. Here we are in Uncensored Pillow Talk. And we just interrupted Laura with a really interesting statement that she was giving to us talking about patriarchy marriages and how are we honest about it, how communicative we are about it. Not, so, not necessarily to want to cheat, but talking about patriarchy, how would you all say that, that we were just talking off air? Yeah, so, you know, just the example that you gave of the husband who's very attracted to his secretary, you know, would he ever be able to take that to his wife and say that to him? Would he be able to say, oh, God, you know, she's really hot and, you know, I would love to, you know, do this, this, and this with her? In most cases, not. Not. Why? Um, because when someone's wrapped up in the, the patriarchal relationship, the idea of it's man and woman and, and it's one way, then the person becomes threatened. Now, in, a, in the queer community, a lot of, um, it's more common for gay relationships to have a more open and honest communication. Um, it's not uncommon for uh, people to go outside of the relationship with the partner knowing, with um, open communication. And so there's a freedom in that. There's an honesty in that. There's a, um, an intimacy in that that is left out of you know, what we traditionally think of. Um, and as that, that creates desire, doesn't it? It really does. It really does. Because yeah. the other person is who they are. They say what they want to say. They don't feel castrated or limited so they can expand and be who they really are. Yeah. And that creates the tension that Esther Pearls was talking about in Made in Captivity, which is this book that we strongly recommend. She talks about to desire somebody, you have to have that tension. Do you want to go over that and explain to the audience what does that mean exactly? Because we read the book and we understand it. But can you tell us a little bit of what she, she meant about the tension for the desire? Yeah, I think that, you know, having this erotic tension in a relationship is extremely important, especially when it comes to sexuality. Um, a lot of time that gets lost because there is no open communication. There's this fear that the relationship will fall apart or that their own security will be um, challenged or threatened. You know, threatened. And so once we allow ourselves to open up to own our own feelings, whether it's jealousy or insecurity, then it, we're creating space to have more op open and honest communication with each other. And um, I think that it can have a more fulfilling you know, sexual experience with our partners when we allow ourselves to do that. I agree completely. And what I like about this is that you were explaining back what we were saying before is that it's so important to be spiritually in tune with yourself because the only way that you can have an open communicative relationship is knowing who you are, what you want, right. and to express it and to feel okay about expressing what you feel, right? That's right. We have to own our own feelings. What is happening for me? What am I feeling about this? Can I communicate this to my partner? Can we work through this together? And, you know, when we allow ourselves to do that, I mean, the opportunities are, are limitless in terms of our sexual experience. So everything is entwined. It's very interesting, mm -hmm. the emotions with the sex. Do you think, and I'm going to ask you this last question and we're going to close it right now. Do you think that um, if you had a rough childhood, you can overcome the issues and become a great sexual partner? Absolutely. I think the first step is coming to know our own sexual story, understanding why we feel the way we feel, why we have the thoughts that we have when it comes to sexuality. Once we develop that intimate relationship with our own sexual story, then we can move to another layer where we have choice and we can say, okay, well, what do I need? What do I want? What do I value in my sexuality? And so, you know, it's this whole process of coming to know yourself, of owning your own sexuality, embodying as humans our sexual experience. And re that really is the beauty of psychology and spirituality and sexuality. Turn off the lights, I'm gonna have sex with Laura right now. <laughs> Everybody, this has been all for today. We have to wrap it up. I'm very glad that you guys are watching this show. If you have any questions, please feel free to post it on Facebook. We will respond in the next show. Laura, thank you for coming here. Thank you for having and me. And just sharing your knowledge with us. I'm Cecilia Castelli. This is Uncensored Pillow Talk. I will see you next week. Stay tuned.